in the lab of Madeleine Lancaster at the MRC, Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. And our lab is interested in in vitro models of human brain development, which means we are basically growing, growing little human brains in a dish. So that means that we are interested in how is the human brain made. So you have an adult human brain, which is big and functional, but it has to start from somewhere. So during your prenatal development, while well, you're, you're in your mom, your brain starts from a very, very, very small layer of cells, which divide very, very much, basically, to make all of the millions of neurons that we have in our head when we're adults. For that, we use this amazing technology of stem cells. So stem cells are cells which, if given proper cues, can basically make any other cells. So you have stem cells, they can make skin, they can make brain, they can make epithelia, they can make whatever you want. And what we do is we take embryonic stem cells and we give them cues for them to self-organize into little embryonic brains. Uh, so basically it's a quite a complicated protocol, so I'm not going to go into details, but what we get in the end is a little brain that floats that uh, looks almost the same as the brain of a baby in the mom. Uh, these are not real brains, that's why we don't call them brains, we call them organoids, because they have some characteristics of an organ, the brain, right? Uh, so don't worry, they don't think, they're not gonna become a person or anything like that, but they are, they basically give us, uh, they represent a little brain of a baby as, as in a mother, but on a much, much simpler scale and on a, a much, much smaller scale. So first of all, uh, we grow our organoids up to a certain point, and uh, up to that point, even in the mother, the brain doesn't really think. So we grow, what we are interested in are the, are the progenitors that give rise to neurons, and actually it's the neurons that think, if you can call it that, that way. But it's not just that, it's actually that the process of thinking is a much more complex uh, thing than just having neurons. What you need to think is to have input and output, and the brains in a dish don't have that and will probably never have that. So they are used actually for many, many different questions. So first of all, we want to know how does the human brain develop. I mean, it might seem trivial, but we actually don't know how does that happen. How, how is it possible that humans have so many more neurons than any other uh, comparable, than any other animal of comparable size in their brain? That's the first question. The second question, of course, is diseases. So if you can imagine, humans have a lot of brain-specific diseases. You can, you can think of Parkinson's disease, you can think of autism. And we, could, we are also very interested in finding out how are these diseases maybe established already in utero before your birth because some of the diseases like schizophrenia might be already uh, actually be a consequence of some things that happened to your mother while she was pregnant with you. And mini brains are actually really, really useful for that. And a third question which our lab is particularly interested in, how did the human brain evolve? As I mentioned, human have a, humans have a very, very big brain compared to their body size and we actually don't know which changes led to this increase in brain size during evolution. And mini brains can really be useful in, in answering those questions. Well, actually I kind of fell into it by, just by chance, but uh, I, have to, I, have to, I have to say the questions that um, this part of developmental neuroscience kind of puts down questions about evolution are something that really, really interested me. And there's a more trivial uh, answer also to that question is that once you cut the brain or the organoid and you stain it for different markers, it's just beautiful. It's just so pretty that I'm surprised that not more people want to study it. <laughs> read, read more widely than only your interest because even though sometimes you think you only want to do one thing and it's the only thing that interests you, Sometimes you might find other things that you never, never actually came across your mind that you, you would fall in love with. Let's say I, I, I was actually trained as an ecologist and I'm here just by chance, ended up in developmental neuroscience growing brain in a dish, growing brains in a dish. So my advice is be persistent and read more than what you are told to.